Hey everybody, what is going on? The moment is finally here. The wait is finally over. Cybertruck deliveries begin this Thursday in Austin, Texas. We'll be there live to cover it for you. And all of our Cybertruck coverage this week is brought to you by Streamline 3D. This is an amazing company, probably one of the coolest sponsors we've had. Some of their customers include Rivian, Tesla, Amazon. I mean, 3D printing is just amazing. You can really mass produce serious quality parts. I mean, these things are in cars, they're in serious use cases. And the lead time is just incredible. You can design a part for a production run of anywhere from one to 5,000 pieces in five days or less. Sometimes the lead time can be as little as one day. So it's just incredible what you can do with this 3D printed technology. We actually saw SpaceX using some pretty incredible 3D printers at their Hawthorne facility here uh, to put into rockets. So they're actually making pieces of the rocket with a 3D printer. And th this allows them to just be much more agile. So big thanks to Streamline 3D. Definitely go check them out. If you use the coupon code CYBER, you get 15% off your order. So huge thanks to them for supporting Whole Mars and definitely go check them out. I feel like more people should be building things, putting their ideas into work. And if you're the kind of person who's building things, you should probably know about Streamline 3D. So let's go for a drive with Tesla full self-driving beta and talk about everything that's going on. I don't think people realize how incredible this experience is today with FST beta. You can be parked outside your house and essentially just say, take me to my friend's house or my relative's house or wherever you wanna go and the car will just take you there. So let's give this a shot. I'll, I'll demonstrate for you guys. Take me to 2153 West Rocking Horse Road, Rancho Palos Verdes. All right, so it's pulled up the address. And uh, we can actually choose the route that we prefer. And then all we do is just push one button and the car starts driving. So here's my thesis. And I think there's a huge transformation happening in the world. And it's actually quite plain to see. It's plain to see for anyone who lives in Europe, who lives in China, who lives in California, or many other major markets, that there's a revolution happening in transportation. And the infrastructure we use to power our economy, our transportation infrastructure, our energy infrastructure, there's EVs all over the place. There's one, a Tesla Model Y on our left. We'll probably see a lot of them on this drive but EVs are taking over. They're already 25% of new sales in California. And it's not just a Tesla thing anymore. You're actually seeing EVs from every major brand, every major brand. Some of them even said, we're gonna go entirely electric. Now they've found that this isn't always so easy, but many of them have committed to it because they realize that this is the future and that there's tons of benefits for consumers. Consumers aren't gonna want anything else. We were just at the LA Auto Show and just saw so many different EVs and EV concepts from every brand. And it's the success of Tesla that's really done this. The fact that Tesla showed that you can actually make an EV profitably, that changed everything. That you could make an EV profitably and that people would love it and actually want it over any other car, gas or otherwise. And it's a wonderful thing. I don't see how anybody could hate Tesla. Tesla is just so much fun. It's fun to drive. It's something that makes your life easier. And it really belongs to all of us. 
It doesn't belong to Elon Musk. It belongs to America. Elon Musk actually owns less than 20% of Tesla. 80% is owned by public shareholders all over the country and all over the world. People's retirement funds. If you own an S&P 500 index fund, you own some Tesla too. And you look at what's happening in China where they dominate in the production of electric vehicles. They dominate in the battery supply chain and they're investing a ton of money into building the vehicles of the future. Because they know that as the world moves to electric vehicles and autonomous electric vehicles, they will have a leg up in producing the cars that the world wants and America won't be able to produce them. And so what's gonna to happen to our auto industry? It's not looking good, to be honest. They have a huge, huge lead. But guess what? The number one highest volume electric vehicle manufacturer in the world is an American company. That shouldn't be the case. But we have Tesla. And we should cherish that. We should say, you know what? This is a great thing. These vehicles are cleaner, they don't pollute the air, which causes a ton of health issues for people. The air just being filled with exhaust, right? That's not how we were meant to live. I mean, people have done studies where they've shown that women who live near the freeways have more premature births and asthma cases for their children and a number of other issues. It's all there in the data. But we just sort of put up with it because, well, that's how it is. There's no alternative. I mean, this is going to be one of the things that we look back on and say, how did we do that? How was that considered normal? It's only normal because we have no alternative. As soon as we have an alternative that doesn't pollute the air around us, it makes no sense. But honestly, that part is sort of taken for granted now in a way. There's still a lot of work to do on electrification, but pretty much everybody has agreed that we're going to go electric. Now, a bigger revolution is happening. And it's AI. AI coming to transport. And you're seeing here that we're on a drive. The car's handled pretty much everything. I gave one accelerator tap when it was slowing down for a blinking yellow light. But it's done everything. And it's going to take us entirely to the destination on its own. I won't have to use the controls at all. So now there's hundreds of thousands of people using this. And a lot of them have started using it every day. They probably spend more time with the softer on than the softer off. And so there's a lot of people complaining, a lot of people upset. They want the system to be better. But what they fail to kind of anticipate, and it makes sense because humans kind of think about things linearly, is that the car is set up to download software updates. It has the ability to run some software on the computer in a safe way. It's actually got two computers to help improve redundancy. Uh-oh. Interesting. What is this guy doing?
I guess maybe they were afraid to park. So, these are the kinds of issues that annoy people. But the software can be anything. You have software running on the computer that can control the motors, that can look at the cameras. And a lot of people think, well, okay, it's just gonna be incremental steps, kind of like what we've been seeing in the 11 series. But entirely new approaches are possible. I think V12 is going to be a massive leap forward. A lot of these situations that the rule-based system struggles with, I think an end-to-end -end system is going to be able to handle flawlessly, naturally, in a way that feels just like a human. Already with the current software, if you don't tell somebody it's on, they wouldn't even guess in many cases. Even if there are some awkward movements, people don't even tend to notice that much. Because humans do some pretty weird things too. With, with V12, I think there's really the potential for a sort of blind taste test. Where you have people blindfolded sit in the car and you have a human drive and you have the computer drive and you ask them which they like better I think they'll actually say the computer I like that drive better and I think if you ask them okay can you identify which one was the computer and which one was the human they might not be able to actually guess in many cases unless they were kind of an expert. I mean, there could be some giveaways like stopping to zero, but I think for most people on a short drive through a road like this, they might have a hard time telling which is which if they weren't an expert. The software is already getting so good that it can do entire drives without any input in some cases. With V12, I think it'll be able to do most drives without any input at all. The little things we do, like pressing on the accelerator or initiating a lane change because it got stuck behind someone trying to park, I think those days will be over. And I think it's potentially going to be an inflection point in how fast the software can improve. All right, so we're getting close now. We're about four minutes away from our destination. We're making a right turn onto Western. So FSD 12. I hear it's gonna be a holiday release. Santa's bringing something special. There's gonna be some other really cool features in the software too that they're keeping very secret, but FSD 12 will be the biggest, obviously. And I think it'll really take this from something that early adopters are loving to something that'll be essential to the mass market consumer. That nobody will want to buy a car that if it doesn't have FSD or something similar. And I think this is gonna open up a massive licensing business to Tesla. If you could really drive a car without any pre-mapping, using just computer vision, with deep, new, deep learning, that would obviously be the right approach. It's just the simplest to scale. It has a ton of benefits. You could actually scale to millions of cars and do it in a cost-effective way. 
you could build this AI technology into every car that's shipping. But people have just been unsure that it works. Slowly but surely, they're proving that it works. It's not perfect, but it's getting pretty damn good. All right, so we're coming up to our destination now. We're gonna have to make a right turn in 0.3 miles. So the car's changing lanes. So go ahead, if you're in the US, and subscribe to FSD. You can pay 200 bucks and get access for a month. And I think if you subscribe now, that'll take you through Christmas into the holiday update. So go ahead, subscribe for $200 and try version 11. See how you like it, drive around with it. And then you'll get V12 when it comes out as well. And you can see how you like that, see how it compares. From what we've heard, it's gonna be a step change, a big leap forward in the architecture, and really maybe arguably the way it should have been all along. So we're approaching the destination I set now, it's right up ahead, Rocking Horse Road, and the car took us here with basically an accelerator push and a lane change, but no takeovers required. All right, it wants to make a left, but it's waiting for this car. Perfect. I like how it's keeping close to the side here. Navigating an open door there. It's really good, even with this old version of V11. So stay tuned. It's Cybertruck Week. We're going to have tons of interesting news for you. And thanks again to Streamline 3D for sponsoring. Go subscribe to FSD and give it a try yourself. We've got the biggest version ever, FSD 12, coming in less than a month. Take care, everyone.